What's up YouTube? I'm Aiden from Broken Air, Oklahoma, and you're watching Trucker Josh Vlogs. Welcome to Newfoundland. How heavy are you? Why is that the first thing people always want to know about me? All right, all right, hey, let's see, let's roll the windows down. I don't know if they want me to stop on the scale or not. Yes, they do. There we go. Well, I got to let me go. Usually when I come onto the island, that scale is open. They care a lot about how heavy you are. They don't want you to be overweight. you think the roads would be a little better then, but... <laughs> That's pretty much anywhere you go, the roads are bad. All right. Welcome, it's actually Newfoundland and Labrador. Two separate places, but under one government. Labrador's on the mainland, on the northeast corner of Quebec there. It's, uh, it's its own little thing. I don't know why it's not its own province. Probably because there's like nobody living there. But they fall under the government of Newfoundland. Cornerbrook Newfoundland. Did you know? Here's a fun fact for you. I learned it uh, well a while ago, but I was reminded of it when I got on the ferry because they always uh, post little pictures of Newfoundland's history and whatnot. You know, I like history and I like learning about how everything was colonized and whatnot. Newfoundland joined the Confederation of Canada in 1949 which makes it only 57 years old as the province of Canada. Newfoundland is one of the first places that was settled in North America. This is the furthest east. So it's much older than that, but they were their own thing up until 1949 when they joined Canada. So welcome, welcome newcomers. You are truly the Newfoundland. We found you, we took you and we kept you. Off to the left there in the distance, you'll see the valley, the river down there, the lake, and that's the city of Corner Brook. It's actually pretty big. It's a nice place to live if you were to move to Newfoundland, I think. I don't know much about it, but it looks nice. In 1.7 kilometers, take exit 6 on right to Lewin Parkway. Corner Brook! Just coming into the town here. You know what's interesting? You look around here, all of these cars, all of this equipment, there's a little uh, crane here, or whatever, boom truck on the right. All of this equipment had to come here by boat over the on the ferry, right? Every single one of these cars on the road 
came here from the mainland on the ferry. That's how vital that ferry is to Newfoundland. Like, it's an island. The only way to get things here is to ship them here, like, literally on a ship. It's crazy, eh? Because I know they don't make the cars here. I bet you a lot of these supplies for all of these buildings here came from uh, the mainland as well. I'm sure they get some of it from, from here on the island, but a lot of this stuff all gets shipped in. That's where I come in. Okay, I think we're getting closer into town here now. May not look like it right now, but I think we go around this corner and we get spat out onto Main Street. Exit on ramp to Main Street, then keep right. Aha, uh -huh, you see? This ramp here? This one? Okay. This one right here. Oh, they got a big cargo ship over there. What do you keep know? Keep right on ramp to Main Street, then turn right. I guess this water here is like, uh, like the bay or something, because they can get cargo ships in here. It's obviously connected to the ocean. Turn right on Main Street. You already told me that, Mandy. I know this. Turn right on Main Street. Yes, I get it. Man, but if I turn her off, I'll forget to turn her back on, then I'll get lost. Oh, this is just a yield sign here. I don't actually have to stop. Okay, I stopped anyways. This bridge looks really low here on the right. It's really low. Continue 600 meters, then turn left on Commercial Street. Okay. I'm gonna stop here first though, is that all right? Just leaving town now, we're on our way to Gander. I just called them. I'm not gonna, not quite gonna make it for before they close. I'll be about a half hour late and uh, they just asked me to come in the morning, so okay. Doesn't really slow me down at all because I can still get the rest of my deliveries done tomorrow that way. It's fine. And then Friday, we will be headed back towards the ferry. For now, we're just sort of enjoying the little scenic route here along the lake. I know you can't see the lake, but it's just off to our left. And all of these houses on our left here have beautiful lakefront property. There's a really old house on the left right there. I bet you that was one of the original ones. Wow. It's all boarded up, not being used anymore. Dude, look at this house on the left here, this red one. Hopefully you'll get to see it. Weird. Weird. That's the strangest house. Jeez, oh, there's the dog over there, you hear him? You'll notice in Newfoundland, the colors of the houses here, their siding, it's very bright. It's always like a, very often it's a bright color. You know, there's a blue one, there's a bright red one, with the white trim. That's classic Newfoundland. There's a purple one. They love the, they love colorful houses here. It's a hot one in Newfoundland. It's a hot one. And a bright one. Let's get, all right, we're these things on. Oh my. Okay, we are. Just past Corner Brook, pulled into the Timmy's. Remember, it's a crime to pass by Timmy's and not stop in and say hello. At least say hello. And buy coffee. You have to. I'm not even sponsored by Tim's. I should really be, you know, I should stop talking about them and demand they sponsor me. What do you, no? Nah, no, just, that's how much I love them. I give them all this free advertising. That's how much I love you, Tim Hortons. If you're listening, you should say hi to me once. <laughs> we, uh, I sent my audience after them on Twitter once, right? Uh, just to totally spam them on Twitter, saying, hey, check out Trucker Josh. For three days, we did a campaign, the Tim Hortons campaign. Tried to get them to acknowledge the channel. Not even one favorite, not even one tweet, nothing. They didn't even like one tweet, and there was thousands of them that we sent in. Thousands to at Tim Hortons and at Tim Hortons US, both of them. Totally ignored all of our tweets, but I knew they were on Twitter because I saw them posting other stuff and retweeting other stuff But they weren't paying attention to me So Tim Hortons I'm still waiting all you got to do is say hi It would make my day it would make my day if Tim Hortons would just say hi to me on Twitter 
Let's try it again, why don't we? Why don't we all go to Twitter, if you have a Twitter? And, uh, why is this lens not all the way open? There we go, my bad. Why don't we all go to Twitter, go to at Tim Hortons for Canada, and at Tim Hortons US for the States. Ask them, have you heard of Trucker Josh yet? Send them a link to my channel or something. Let's all go there and bombard them with tweets again and see if we can get them to favorite, retweet, like, or maybe even respond to one of them. I will retweet all of them that I can see. So you gotta tag me in there on Twitter and tag Tim Hortons so that I see it and I'll retweet it so that they get it twice. And we're gonna get them to say hi. Okay, we're gonna get them to acknowledge all of us. We're a community that loves Tim Hortons and we just want them to acknowledge us. <laughs> and we wanna have some fun. So uh, yeah, go, and go see if you can get their attention on Twitter. If you do get their attention, let me know. Send me a tweet or uh, quote the tweet and send it to me so that I can tell that they either liked it, retweeted it, or just responded to it. It's gonna be another Tim Hortons Barragement? Is that a word? Tim Horton's campaign from Trucker Josh Vlogs. Well, we went on a little bit of a rabbit trail there. I was gonna tell you that we're here at the Tim Hortons, just past Cornerbrook, Newfoundland. Beautiful, beautiful area here. We're going to Gander, not gonna quite make it there to deliver tonight, but we will be there this afternoon, late this afternoon. I've got some apples here to eat on the way. Let's get going. Advertising is not cheap, you know? That's probably why they don't want to acknowledge me, because as soon as they acknowledge me, they think they're gonna have to pay me and right now they're getting all this free advertising out of me. So why would they acknowledge me and break the perfect cycle of free advertising, right? That's good business, see? Tim Hortons is smart. That is a highway enforcement officer. You mind your own business there, buddy. All right? I don't wanna talk to you while you're in that uniform or in that truck. Now I've noticed a lot of other YouTubers, or I've been told of them, that are uh, also sponsored by Pilot Flying J and by others. I've had you know multiple sponsorship deals in the last six months even. Uh, but I want to speak to the YouTubers a little bit, the guys who are making videos and the girls and who are being approached by potential sponsors. Don't let them undercut you, okay? Because they're always gonna offer you a lot less than you're worth. I want you all to go to socialbluebook.com, just like it sounds, one word, socialbluebook.com. Put in all your information. Okay, I recommend this site, I stand behind it. I uh, met the people who run it at Vlogger Fair last year in Seattle. Uh, what it does is it takes all of your analytics from your channel, your view count, uh, your demographics, your geography, like where the people are watching, for your Facebook, uh, for YouTube first of all, for your YouTube videos, then for your Facebook posts, your Twitter posts, Instagram posts, and it'll put a value at how much it is worth on your channel. So go in there, when someone wants to sponsor you for a video and they say, hey, we'd like you to talk about our product and we'll sponsor you, go to Social Blue Book and you can send them a quote right from the site. We just arrived here in Gander, Newfoundland. Got a nice primo spot, nosed in right in the corner here. It's perfect, beautiful. We're at the Irving, just west of town. Not many parking spots here, but I got the best one. I'm gonna go inside now and see what they got inside. Gotta walk behind all these trailers. There we go. Jump over this little puddle here. It's been a good day. It's been a good day. It smells a lot like fish here. If you're wondering what it smells like in Gander. It smells like fish. This place was a lot smaller than I thought it was. It's just an itty bitty little corner. Like that's all it is. It's a tiny little like shack of three different kinds of chips. A few pepperoni sticks. I don't know what the point of that stop is. If I wasn't spending the night here, that wouldn't be worth it for me to stop here. They have a restaurant in there though. I'm gonna go in there and get some supper right away. I'm just gonna let Diesel out. And uh, actually, no, I gotta go in on this side then. I'm gonna go in there right away and get some supper. They do have a restaurant in there that actually looked pretty good. The restaurant was pretty much the whole building. So I'm guessing it's their main attraction. I'm gonna let Diesel out first. Hey, bud. Hey, wait, 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 wait. Hey, 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 you're not wearing your collar yet, man. Sit. You wait right here. 
And if you're not wearing your collar, how are people going to know how to get a hold of me if you take off? I know you wouldn't, but you know it makes me feel better if your collar's on. It's got your name tag and stuff on it. So I don't know what kind of food to expect in the restaurant here. I'm guessing normal food, like anywhere else. Oh, but it's been a good day. Like any other day. It's been sunshine the entire day. Just a beautiful day. We drove about six hours. We drove from Porto Basque all the way out here to Gander, which is a little over halfway, maybe two-thirds of the way across the island. We unload one box here, or one piece here tomorrow, and we go to Clarenville. We unload three there, and then we go further into St. John's, and we unload one there, then we're empty. Then I just got to clean up my trailer, get it ready for the next driver, head back to the ferry, and uh, so far I've never had a reload. Diesel, stop eating the grass. So far I've never had a reload out of Newfoundland. I always got to go back to the mainland to get reloaded. Uh, I'm guessing most of the freight that comes from the island here is gobbled up by the local companies, which makes sense, right? The, it's their island, so they get to haul all the freight out of here. Same thing with Manitoba and the West. And it's sort of the same thing with Canada in general. You know, you don't see a lot of American drivers coming into Canada. And a lot of the times if they do come into Canada, they uh, come up here and then they go back to the States empty a lot of the time. Not all the time, but or they have very cheap freight that they take back because Canada dominates that market. We take all the freight from our country down to the States and then there's not really much left for American companies that come up with freight. That's why it's mostly Canadians going back and forth. We're, we've got a much higher percentage of international drivers. If you cannot cross the American border, you won't even get a job at a Canadian trucking company. That's that's how serious it is. You have to be able to cross into the States because you will be guaranteed to. Diesel. Hey, far enough. There he is, wandering around, sniffing. What a sniffer, sniffy sniffer. I see you back there. Hey, we're watching you. I'm looking this way, but I'm watching you back there. Got eyes in the back of my head, man. Just finished watching a movie. Uh, it was called Contagion. It was really good, really good. Sort of, uh, uh, sort of like uh, what would happen if there was a worldwide epidemic uh, sickness that there was no cure for. I think millions and millions of people died and whatnot. In the end, of course, some American saved the world. As with every Hollywood movie, somehow it's America that always saves the world. So it was another Hollywood movie. It was great. I liked it. I decided to put two cans of dog food between here and <laughs> my upper bunk because I can actually sit up straight this way. The one thing I don't like about this Western Star that I have right now is if I do take these cans of dog food, this is just here for now, not for while I'm driving, just so you know. Uh, when it's all the way down, I gotta sit down like this and I gotta like hunch like this. There's not enough room between the bunks for you to sit up straight and actually do stuff. So while I'm here working on my videos, I'm always scrunched over, right? So I had to prop up this upper bunk. The reason I have this upper bunk down is because, well, you guys figured I needed more storage and you were right. And you're like, why don't you just take the top bunk down and store stuff up on top? It's what my dad's done for years and years and years already. I knew about this and I didn't really want to do it. And I'd always store stuff here and then I move it to my driver's seat up there and back and forth and back and forth. If I was in the back, I'd move it to the front. If I was in the front, I'd move it to the back. But I found that if I store everything up there, that I don't have to move as much stuff around all the time. I actually like this better. So the scenery's been great today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I sure did. I always love coming to Newfoundland in the summertime. It's a beautiful place. If you guys ever come up here to Newfoundland, just come up in the summertime. Amazing, beautiful place. Beautiful people here. Uh, amazing people. Very, very, very friendly. Uh, it's Eastern Canada. What do you expect? People are very, very friendly here. Uh, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of people that come from different parts of the world to visit here. Because again, like I said a couple of days ago, uh, it's not the most diverse place ever, ever been in the world. Like, it's okay for me because uh, I'm used to this kind of stuff. But... Uh, it's not like Toronto. If you go to Toronto, you'll see every culture of the world equally represented. You come here, you'll see one culture, pretty much. But that's the same thing, even if you come to southern Manitoba too, and uh, Saskatchewan, most of rural Alberta and whatnot, right? Anyways, I'm babbling on about nothing here. I'm tired, as you can tell. I'm going to bed. I hope you guys had a great day. I hope you have a great night. I hope you'll join me tomorrow for another vlog, anytime after 4 a.m. Central Time. I'll see you then.